Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's discussion about the Schwab US Dividend ETF trading under the ticker symbol SEHD. I hope that you're having a fantastic time in the market. Um, you know, finally, we're having some sunshine after the gloom and doom of the past like year and a half to two years. So SEHD holds a significant appeal amongst retail investors due to its combination of high yield, very uh, low risk, and very reasonable fees. It provides a diversified dividend portfolio in a single investment, which makes it a very like prized choice in the market for, I would say for like retail and institutionals alike. In recent years, the job market has become, you know, uncertain and inflation has impacted the economies around the world where a lot of countries were previously deflationary suddenly became inflationary once again. So amidst those uncertainties, it has become essential for us to secure a better financial future for ourselves, that we cannot leave this to fate and to the government. Oh, and while we're at it, to your employer as well. So in order to achieve this, it's crucial to identify stable revenue income streams that can distribute dividends and to provide a shield against the market insecurity. So for many investors, SCHD has been considered as one such opportunity. Like you buy SCHD, it's kind of sort of like securing your own future. That's how it's been like spun around. It goes beyond to being just another dividend ETF. It's often regarded as a safe haven by both retail and institutional investors alike. Known for delivering stable and growing dividends, SEHD stands out as one of the largest and most diversified dividend ETFs in the market, maintaining its popularity over time. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about SEHD in a pretty comprehensive analysis to help you and not to help you like analyze whether you should buy more of SDHD um, for your portfolio. Now, at this point, if you're still watching, I just want to say, you know, thank you for tuning in. Um, if you want to watch more SEHD related analysis, as well as for many other companies that we cover on this channel, uh, please take a look at my channel page and to subscribe to stay updated on the latest. With that being said, let's jump right into today's topic. So first of all, SCHD has been doing quite well today. It hit a high of $78.60 last time I checked and a low of $78.18. Over the past five days, it has increased by about 1.2% compared to the previous period. Now, I know that 1.2% is laughable for some other, like, say, NASDAQ stocks, but for SEHD, which is basically S&P 500, that's also giving you, you know, dividend money, uh, it's significant. Oh, and that combined with the fact that they are currently having, like, historical, uh, they're reaching their historical, their his historical peaks, right? So... All that needs to be taken into consideration. I personally believe that it's quite significant. Looking at the previous uh, 30 days, it seems like SEHD has been able to pierce the ceiling of $77.33. Although from a percentage perspective, um, it's relatively modest at around 2.7% increase. It tends to stay a bit on the plateau before progressing forward and we should expect somewhat of a pullback before that ever happens. On the six-month horizon, SEHD has been doing pretty well, I would say, pretty, like, pretty decent after bouncing back from the bottom back in November 2023. Ever since then, the ETF price has been able to hover around the $75 range within an, with, like, an upward tendency. The ETF price has increased by 6% during the six month. With that being said, currently the, the option contracts have like the key strike prices around the 77 and 78 strike prices with a pretty even split between the puts and calls. This, by the way, kind of sort of comes back to what I said before. Remember I said, 
right now we wouldn't be we shouldn't be at least we shouldn't be surprised if there's any sort of pullbacks well that's that's it because most people believe that you know around 77 and 78 dollars we need to have like a um we need to take a step back and to consider whether SCHD should continue its ascension or to take a pretty long break, right? Either or, we should be ready for this potential. Now, options are a pretty useful tool for us to gauge uh, the crowd, to like to check out what's going on, what is the current dynamics, how do you feel the market? Personally, I think that the market is relatively agnostic about where uh, it might go next. Okay, like if it goes from 77 to 78, oh, they're going to be happy, but no more than that. If it goes beyond 80, then that's going to take a little time. And if it goes down, we should also be not that surprised, right? The state of the economy, the fact that it's, you know, historical peak um, and so on, like it shouldn't be, nothing should surprise us around those levels, whether they go up or down. Now, when we look at like the volume, they're trading very similar volumes, like right now, a few million, two to three millions, uh, compared to the usual 3.6. The volume is a bit like the heartbeat uh, of the trading. Like it tells us how much action is going on right now. More volume means the current trend is going to continue or even accentuate whereas like if it has lower volume than the average then we might be looking at something that is you know something that may not hold in the test of time or something that may not even be a true trend right now at least what we're seeing is the mostly sideways tendency of SEHD is certainly uh, something that actually reflects the market sentiment. The Schwab SEHD is a dividend exchange traded fund ETF that has gained popularity amongst investors seeking reliable income streams. Launched by Charles Schwab, the ETF offers a pretty convenient way for investors to access a diversified portfolio of companies with robust cash flows. A dividend ETF like SEHD essentially brings together a collection of companies known for their strong dividend paying histories. By investing in SEHD, individuals can effectively acquire shares uh, in hundreds of companies in a single transaction, providing a, provi like a pretty simplified approach to building a diversified investment portfolio. Instead of looking for hundreds of individual stocks, analyzing the financial reports and ratios of each and every one of them, SEHD will do that job for us. They're going to do the heavy lifting for us. They're going to check all these companies, their cash flows, their profitability, how liquid they are, what's their outlook, what's their sector's outlook, and so on. And then they're going to offer investors a basket saying, you know, we went through the basket, it looks legit, buy it. So one of the key advantages of SD, SEHD uh, lies in the ability to offer a good yield for the investors on top of the diversification and on top of the fact that they're going to scan through these companies. The fund's emphasis on companies with consistent and growing dividends contributes to a reliable income source that those seeking regular returns. Additionally, the ETF's broad exposure to various sectors ensures a, I would say, a well-diversified like investment, reducing the risk of associating with individual stocks. This approach is very healthy in the long run because we can have an idea of what's popular right now. It doesn't mean that it's true. It doesn't mean that it's going to stay true for long. So, by spreading our money around, at least even if we're wrong, we're not going to be wrong uh, by a lot in terms of money, and vice versa if, if we're proven right. So the safety in number approach is another obvious advantage in SEHD's portfolio. It includes a large number of stocks, 
and this diversity acts as a protective measure, which helps us to mitigate the impact of poor performance from any single companies. So, investors may benefit from the resilience provided by a basket, making SEHD a pretty attractive option um, for those who are looking to have a return in their put in their investments. Now, when you compare like the pattern of SEHD and S and P five hundred, you can see some pretty interesting things. Like SEHD is basically S and P five hundred because they're all large caps. The only difference is they concentrate more on those large caps that are not only large, but that distribute money. In other words, they might be more mature compared to the typical NASDAQ stuff or the the typical S&P stuff. Um, The price action of SCHD can also be justified by considering the the largely increased capital um, liquidity within the global equity market over the past 15 years, as more investors have recognized the importance of dividend-paying stocks in their portfolios. The demand of ETFs like SCHD has really risen. The fund's performance is also influenced by the individual success of the companies within its portfolio, further emphasizing the connection between price movements and the underlying assets. In other words, the price increase of SEHD shows an overall decrease of asset yield over the past decade or so, mostly due to the quantitative easings that may have been overseen by central banks around the world. The investors with specific goals find SEHD particularly beneficial. For example, those prioritizing a stable and increasing dividend yield may find SEHD pretty well aligned with their objectives. The emphasis of, of companies with strong cash flows and consistent dividend payments also caters to income-focused investors, providing them with a very reliable income stream. In fact, at the end of the day, when everything boils down to numbers, we also have to consider that in addition to the 4% dividend yield SDHD gives us on a yearly basis, we should point out that over the course of the past decade, the ETF's price increased by 115%, meaning it's more than 11% every single year, just on the capital gain alone. SCHD is likely one of the best ETFs in the market right now that provides diversification, high yields, and capital appreciation. Obviously, nothing will keep increasing forever, so definitely take that with a big grain of salt. Nevertheless, SCHD has been able to deliver high returns. So right now, the global markets are facing a complex interplay of factors that have the potential to significantly influence the equities worldwide. In this speculative analysis, I believe that the consequences of the global inflation, surging commodity prices, and decline quantitative easing, as well as the rise of inflation rates or interest rates, plus the geopolitical instabilities, are going to play a significant part. The increasing inflation rate has been putting pressures across the globe, threatening the purchasing power raising the input costs, and impacting corporate profitability. Companies operating internationally may face challenges in managing rising production costs and also to sustain profit margins. Those dynamics could trigger market volatility as investors adjust their risk-return expectations. The upward trajectory of commodity prices, including energy, metals, agricultural products, have been having far-reaching implications for various sectors of the global equities market. The companies heavily dependent on these commodities may experience squeezed profit margins, potentially affecting stock valuations and investor sentiment. The reduction or the end of QE's quantitative easing measures by the central banks worldwide may have resulted in reduced market liquidity. So this in turn could lead to higher borrowing costs for companies seeking capital, which may also discourage investment activities or will. The elevated market volatility 
plus the reduced investor's appetite may also continue to occur. Now, the central banks around the world are tackling this delicate situation of balancing the inflation rates with the economic stability and, if possible, growth. Central banks opted for aggressive interest rate hikes to combat inflation. Borrowing costs for companies have been rising, which has also slowed down business activities and also fueling the market's volatility in terms of the equity prices. Now, ongoing geopolitical tensions, including trade disputes, political uncertainties, and social unrests, will inject an additional element of volatility into the global markets. Investors may adopt a cautious approach, shifting towards safer assets, impacting the equities. Additionally, the escalating conflicts may disrupt supply chains, negatively impacting the performance of international companies. Given the interconnectedness of global markets, the aforementioned factors have reverberating effects on the U.S. equities market. Companies with significant exposure to international market may face a lot of headwinds resulting from the economic slowdowns, disrupting the supply chains and the currency fluctuations. But nevertheless, the U.S. market is known for its resilience and the diverse sectors may attract investors seeking safe havens. So really, the current landscape is characterized by global inflation, surging commodity prices, surging commodity prices, reduced quantitative easing, rising central bank inflation rates, geopolitical instabilities, and also ongoing lack of certainty regarding growth. While the U.S. market may exhibit relative strength due to the safe haven status, it's going to remain interconnected with the global economic landscape. For long-term investors, these conditions may offer opportunities to identify undervalued companies with strong fundamentals and international diversification. With that being said, short-term trades should be approached with caution because of the increased volatility and uncertainty. And also, we should be careful when assessing individual companies, sectors, or regions. Now, having said that, what is my overall opinion about SEHD as an ETF? So, I think that it looks like a good thing to have. Uh, it's cruising close to its historical highs in a bit of a shaky market. My advice, of course, is to take it slow, but you know, the assumption that it's going to go above and way beyond $80 is not that impossible. In fact, it may happen in the short term, assuming we don't go through a pullback. If we go through a pullback, it's just going to come back to like $80 uh, in a bit longer. That's it. So in terms of options and volumes, we are now expecting more volatilities um, from now onward because we might be expecting some profit taking. But overall, yeah, it's a great ETF to be had. Uh, it's a good ETF to be bought over time, not in like literally one shot. But if you buy it gradually over time, then that's probably like the best way to go. Um, as soon as you have like free capital, I would say that it's good to have something like 15 to 20% of your capital on such a dividend ETF.